Glad everybody's here this morning. Uh, if you're new here and you want some more information about our church, uh, we'd love for you to get in contact with you. You can uh, fill out a card that's right in front of you on the back of the row that's in front of you. It's got a connection card in it. It also has a prayer request card. If you have a prayer request for us, we would love to have the honor of praying for you. Uh, so if you fill that out and then later on in our service when we pass the offering, we'd love for you to drop that in so that we can know how to pray for you or connect with you. Um, but it is good seeing everybody here today. So let's pray and we'll get into our message this morning. Heavenly Father, we pray as we open your word that you would speak and that we would listen and not just listen, but to, to do what you ask us to do. Uh, we thank you for this time that we have together and I pray that I would speak your truth and your love. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're in this series called Class. There's some. It's every week. All right, here we go again. We'll be burning that microphone later. All right, anyway, we're in this series called Class in Session, uh, where we're going through some teachings of Jesus that start in Luke chapter 8 and go through Luke chapter 11. And um, there have been times in our life where we have learned a lesson real quickly, and there have been times in our life that it's taken a long time for us to learn something, or we're still in the process of learning something. Not just within the context of a school. It took you one time touching the top of a stove to know not to do that anymore, right? Ouch, that hurts, that burns. We're in the ER. We're not doing that anymore. You learn not to do that. You, there may be something in class that you picked up on real quick. It came natural to you, and so you said, yeah, I, I, can, I can get this. But there's also things that you struggle with, subjects in schools that you struggled with, social cues that you still might struggle with, and knowing how to, to react to certain things or how to handle some, some certain situations. Maybe driving still a mystery for you, even though you've had your license for years and years and years. And, and so there are things that stick and things that take a little bit longer. And Jesus was dealing with some people in the disciples who weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. And there were a lot of times where he would have to go over what he said and then re-go over what he said. And so what we're going to look at today is a time where Jesus continues to break down something that he has taught them. Last week we started in Luke chapter 8 at what we call the parable of the sowers. And Jesus tells this story that there's this farmer who scatters seed everywhere, that some of it is trampled on and birds eat it. Some of it is, falls upon rocks so it doesn't grow very long. Uh, some grows a little bit, but weeds choke it out. But there's some that's fertile soil, and, and it, it takes root. And then Jesus goes away from the crowd that he teaches this to, and he goes to his disciples, and he says, this is what it means. He says that the, the seed's the word of God, and that the first soil where everything's trampled on and taken when somebody believes or somebody hears but doesn't believe. And the second one is somebody hears, believes, but then doesn't kind of grow and get roots. And so when a trial comes, they walk away from the faith. The third situation is they hear, they believe, but then they allow some other things to grow up around it and they get distracted and soon they fall away. But the fourth soul is those who are open and, and ready to receive that word. And so he, he, he explains this and then immediately goes into a, what seems like a different conversation, but it's really the same, because he's going to imply something about that fourth soil. He looks at them, and he says in Luke chapter 8, verse 16, no one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in can't see. So Jesus is kind of confusing them probably a little, because he's gone from this agricultural theme to now he's talking about light. And Yet, we, we can understand where Jesus is coming from here. Jesus is making a, a direct correlation between the parable he just told and his disciples. He's, saying, he's talking about people who, who are that fourth soil, who, who receive the Word of God, it gets inside of them, and it grows, and he says those people are light. Now, we understand why. 
Right? Jesus said, the seed's the word of God. Well, John, in John chapter 1, says that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. That's Jesus. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So he came. He was the word. So when, when we receive, as, as fertile soil, receive the, Jesus, then, then we receive the word. But Jesus wasn't just the word. In, in John chapter 1, verse 9, it tells us that the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And then later on, Jesus describes himself and says that he is, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so Jesus not only says that I'm, I'm the word, but I'm also the light of the world. And so now he looks at his disciples and he says, listen, you, you're following me. You're following me. You're learning from me. You seem to re have received this word that I've told you that's true, even though they're still growing in their faith and they have a lot of questions. He says, let me tell you, this is when you receive the word, you also shine light. That's the, that's the expectation. He, he's given his disciples this understanding. Listen, you're not just going to kind of hang around me all the time and be happy by association. You have something to do. And that is at receiving the world, word, being this fertile soil, receiving the world, word, having it root inside of you, you need to start shining a light. You, you, you need to start shining, more specifically, my light everywhere that you go. And this is a theme throughout Jesus' ministry. This is a teaching that's found in all the Gospels. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus stands up and he says, You are the light of the world, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So Jesus says, this is, this is who you are. You are because you have me. You have light. Disciples, listen, you, you have to shine your light. And he uses this, this illustration. He talks about how he said this is ridiculous to light a, lot, a lamp in your house and then cover it up so it doesn't show light. Like that's the very reason you have a light is to show light. And so he's making it abundantly clear. Disciples, you have to shine my light. You, you, it's not optional. You, you have to shine the light. And he speaks to us today in the same way. Those of us who have received this message, who's, who's where the word has gotten into us, is deeply rooted in us, good soil, Jesus says, okay, if you've received this message, then you have to go and be light. You have to go and be light. You don't hide it. You don't hide it anywhere. Look what Jesus talks about. He says that this light, he, he says it, it gives light to those who come in the house. And so what Jesus is using the example of is, is it, it, it's like what you show off. He's what you show off. He, you bring people into your house and you say, see, look at this. Maybe when you were younger, that was a Christmas present. You couldn't wait to go and tell your neighbor or some other friend, hey, look, come over, look and see what I got. Or, or maybe you went and you, you splurged, you got a car, and you call all your buddies and say, hey, come look at what I got. Hey, don't tell my wife. Look what I got. And, or maybe you know, whatever it is, a grandkid draws you a picture or something and gives you a gift. And you say, hey, come here, look, look, look at what this is. And Jesus says, this is what I am. You invite people in and you say, hey, look at this. Look. Look at this light. The question that, he, that we have to answer this morning is, as Jesus' followers, are we shining this light? Is this something that we are doing? And maybe to help us answer that question, there's a couple other questions we can ask. The first one is, is that light even on? See, the truth is you can't shine the light of Jesus unless you have Jesus. He's the source. To use an illustration, we can do our best to do some things, but we're essentially like one of those glow sticks that you crack and they light for about like three hours and then they go away. Jesus is an eternal light source and he says, you got to plug into me and I'm the real thing. I, I don't fade away. So you have to, you have to show me. So it, it, without Jesus, that light can't, is, it isn't on. But the, the issue is that there's a lot of us who we would say that we follow Jesus, but that light's still not on. And we have to answer the question, why isn't it on? And, and maybe it's because we're afraid of what people would say if the light was on. 
Maybe we live with someone who's not a believer and doesn't really care at all about Jesus or anything like that. And, and you say, man, if I turn that light on, that relationship's really going to be strained. It's going to be hard. Maybe we, we're scared of repercussions if we start turning, if, if the light is on. So we just, we kind of have this mindset like the disciples where we just say, I, I kind of would just like to hang around Jesus. But Jesus says, if you hear my word, if it's in you, you, you need to be the light. Maybe some of us would say, oh yeah, the light's on. For sure, light's on, everything's good. All the lights in the house are on, we're, we're great. And, but then the question is, does it stay on? Because Jesus says, listen, it's ludicrous to have a light and cover it up. And so many of us end up going through life treating Jesus' light like a flashlight, where like there's people that we, there's people that we like, and so we turn the light on for them, and then somebody we don't like shows up, and we turn it off. Maybe we even got one of those clappers that so, so, you know, it's on, and then somebody shows up, we clap again, and it turns off or something. We're turning it on and off, on and off, depending on who's around us, whether we like them, whether we don't like them. Maybe we come here, and we turn the light on, right? Some of us do, like, the church adjustment, and we all do it. But when you get out of the car, come in here, do the church adjustment, turn your light on, everything is great. But then, like, as soon as you leave, you turn it back off again because you're going to log on to Facebook, and you want to pick back up on that argument that you were on before you did the church adjustment and got here, right? We turn the light on, we turn the light off. And Jesus says that's absolutely ludicrous. Why would you have a light and try to cover it up? And that's why he's telling you about him. Why would you try to cover me up? And so he tells his disciples then, and he tells us now, you have to shine that light everywhere that you go. And then he gives us the reason. Verse 17, he says, For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. I think one of the more frustrating things about the world that we live in, and I think a lot of us would agree with this, is people getting away with stuff, right? It it drives us up the wall. But we know that there's things done in secret that that people may never find out. Now, it gets really frustrating when it's not done in secret, and they still don't get in trouble for it. But there's, even within our relationships, probably there's some things that our significant other, our kids, somebody, does, our, our close friends, they don't know about. Because we, we've gotten used to the fact that we can kind of just, we can just hide it. And Jesus says, listen, there's going to be this time where everything that was hidden is actually going to be disclosed everywhere. All those, you know, classified files in our life that we think are tucked away, they're going to come open. And he's referring to a time in which John, who's a follower of Jesus, gives us a picture of. In Revelation chapter 21, he gives us this picture of what happens after Jesus has defeated Satan and, and, and death and, and all, all results of, of brokenness and sin. He talks about this new heaven and new earth that's coming. And, this, and he describes how beautiful it's going to look, but then he gives us some details about it. And so in Revelation chapter 21, we see that John talks about this light. In verse 20, uh, starting in 23, he says, The city does not need the sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its light. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no more night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter into it enter in it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. He says there's, there's this reality that one day there's no, like, there's no nighttime and daytime. There's no, there's no sun and moon. They're, they're, those don't matter anymore because there is a light source. It's the eternal light source, and Jesus is literally the light of the world. And he, he shines everywhere. And so darkness doesn't exist anymore. That's why the gates don't have to close because there's nothing dangerous anymore because Jesus is the light and he's he's everywhere. It's beautiful. And while it is so very hopeful for us to have this reality of no more darkness, there's 
There's an important truth here at the end. He says, not only is there no darkness, no, no impure thing, but also basically all those who are in the light stay in the light. But those who aren't, aren't there. It's only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life enjoy this light. And so Jesus telling us to be the light now is essentially saying, hey, you've got to tell them about the light. So that they're in the light, so that when all there is is light, they're there. We shine the light of Jesus. It's an invitation to take part in what is to come, that one day it is just going to be light, and it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be everything that we could ever hope for and more. But it's only going to be for those who are in the light. Only those who have received Jesus, who have his blood washing over their sins and forgiving them, that's the only people in the light. And so we have to be the light today so that people will receive the light so that we can all one day be in this reality where all there is is light. And so he's looking at his disciples saying, listen, right now there's some things done in secret, but there's going to be a day where everything's out in the open. And you need to shine your light right now so that everyone, because I created everyone for a relationship with me, so that everyone can be there. So now he's kind of upping the ante for the disciples. He's saying, listen, it's not just about hearing and hanging out with me. You have to be this light. You have to go and share this message. And he tells us that today. Verse 18, Jesus says, Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more, and whoever does not have, even what they think they have, will be taken from them. So Jesus says, hey, listen, disciples, be very careful how you listen. Be very careful how you listen. This is one of those Bible verses you could take out of context and use on your children. Right? Be very careful how you listen what I'm about to tell you, right? But what Jesus is trying to get them to understand is what listening really means, and we're going to see that here in a second. But he says, be careful how you listen, because here's the reality. Those who have gets more. Those who don't have, even what they think they have, will be taken away. And unfortunately, there are people going around preaching a gospel that's way different than Jesus called the health and wealth prosperity gospel, who use this verse out of context to justify think, talking about material things. That's not what this is about. Jesus is talking about faith. He's talking about faith and action. He's talking about he's talking about striving for something. Using one example, if he's talking about faith, he says, "You want you want more faith? Here's what you need to do: be faithful." Because if if you start being faithful today, and it's going it might be hard, be faithful today, and then decide tomorrow I'm going to be faithful again. One day it's going to kind of become muscle memory. You're going to get better at it and better at it, and and you'll get more. You'll grow in it. Do you want to go and love people? I know that it might be hard, but so so just start today loving people. And and if you have love, you just keep trying to add to it every single day, and then you you're going to get better at it. And so he's telling the disciples, listen, shining the light, it's not going to be easy, but you start here, listen, and put it into action, and it's going to be difficult at first, and it may never be easy, but you're going to get better at it. Because if you have, it'll be given more. It's 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 those who think they have it, but they don't do anything about it that, that lose out. And all of a sudden, Jesus summarizes in one statement everything that we talked about last week with the parable of the sowers. That there's three types of soil in which people don't see it through. But there's one that, that they do. And so he's saying, you, you got to start this. And he's looking at a group of people, these disciples, and, and one of them is Judas. He's going to betray him, and then he's going to go hang himself, but... Of the remaining disciples there, he's looking out and he knows that all but one of them are going to be killed because they follow Jesus. They're going to be executed because they follow Jesus. And the other one is going to be exiled to an island somewhere. He knows it's going to be difficult for them, and so he says, you've got to do this because then you'll get more. You just keep trying each and every day. So when we get up here and we make these statements about being the light of the world, and we say, well, what does that look like? Here, just, just be it today. Strive to be today, and then tomorrow strive to be it again, and then you're going to see you're going to get better at it. That's what he's telling his disciples. 
Shining the light of Jesus today helps you shine the light of Jesus tomorrow. It helps you because Jesus says I, it's kind of like exercise. You, you get better at it. You receive more of it. So Jesus concludes the kind of this teaching segment, or at least it seems like he does, by saying, hey, this is, this is what it's like. If you have the Word of God in you, then you need to be light. And you need to be light because people need to see light and receive light before it's too late. And if you think, if you want to do this, you need to do this, then, then you just keep doing it. You just keep being faithful, keep loving, keep, because you'll get more of it. And this, this thing happens where it's, it seems to be a little out of left field. It says, now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. And someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. And then Jesus replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. So like, nice, happy Jesus went away for a second there. Right? This picture where, where Jesus is always nice to everyone, like, this is, this is not what this is what a rebellious teenager says, right? This, this is what a rebellious teenager says. This is not really what we would expect Jesus, all loving, you know, king of the universe to say. And, but you look at the context, you might say, well, maybe I can see why Jesus would say this. Because the reality is his brothers were jealous of him. And after all, how, how can you blame them? They grew up, like, all the time with their mom being like, hey, can you please just be more like Jesus? Like, Jesus was walking on water at his age. What are you doing? You want me to take out the trash, right? I mean, that's a, that's a lofty standard to have to live up to, but we see this in action in John chapter 7. John, Jesus has been ministering in this area of Galilee, kind of where he's from, and and look at what his brothers come up. He says, hey, hey. And they dress it up really nice, but they say, hey, leave Galilee and go to Judea so that your disciples there may see the works that you do. No one wants to become a public figure, acts in secret. Since you're doing these things, go show yourself to the world. It looks really nice, but here's why they said that. Verse 5, for even his own brothers did not believe in him. So even though it looked really nice, his brothers were saying, Jesus, you're embarrassing us. Go away. Take this fraud show somewhere else. And so maybe that's why Jesus answers the way that he answers, right? Maybe he knows his, his brothers are there, and he's like, oh, now that I got a big following, you want to come be like, that's my brother. No, I'm not going to do that. You get to stay on the, that. Maybe that's why Jesus, but the reality is it has nothing to do with that. Jesus is teaching. And what Jesus teaches here is, you know what, when it comes to my family, it's not about flesh and blood. When it comes to being part of my family, here's what my family does. My family hears the word of God and puts it into practice. They're good soil, and they shine a light. That's what my family does. And so when we're welcomed into his family, that's... That's how it happens. We receive the word of God. We believe it to be true. We act upon it, being baptized into him, and then we shine light, and, and we're, we do what the family does. And what's neat about this is we don't know about all the brothers, but at least one of them, it got through his thick head. It took Jesus coming back from the dead, but it did. And we have what he writes. His name's James, and he writes towards the end of the, the Bible there in his, his book in verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 26. We see that he gets it. He says, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. His entire book is about putting faith into action because he realizes that's... And when someone asked Jesus what he was there before, he says, I'm here to seek and save that which is lost. 
And so we scatter seeds and we shine light because that's what Jesus does and we're family. That's what he, he's called us to do. And so to the disciples 2,000 years ago, he tells them, you got to shine a light. And to each and every one of us today who are his followers in an increasingly dark world, he says, you have to shine my light. And so we're presented with this, um, we're presented with, with this choice this morning. Let's go back to John, 1 John, or John chapter 1, verse 9. We read that earlier. This is the true light that gives light to everyone who's coming into the world. But then there's, there's something that happened. It says, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet all, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. So here John lays that out, everything that we've talked about today. The light of the world came into the world, but not everyone, not everyone jumped on board. And so this morning, you're in one of two camps. You have received the light, or you've rejected the light. And, and there's no in-between. You've, you've received it, him, or you've rejected him. And this morning, he wants you to receive him. He came here to offer a path to him so that you could receive and be light. And so maybe that's the decision you need to make today, to receive his light. But I want to talk specifically to those of us who have received that light. It tells us here that, that those who receive him, who believed in his name, he gave us the right to become children of God. We're family. But that doesn't take away the fact that he says, you, you got to shine it. Listen, everywhere you go, you got to keep that on. Because that's what my family does. If his word has rooted in you, you, you need to be light. Not selectively, but faithfully. And so in reality this morning, every single one of us need to make a decision. Receive the light or reject the light. And if we've received the light, to say, I, I'm going to shine it everywhere I go. So as many people as possible see that light and will be in the light for all of eternity. Let's pray. Father, as we come here to this time of decision, I pray that we would act upon whatever you call us to today. Uh, for those who are here who have never received you or your, your call to repentance and a relationship with you, I pray that they would here this morning. Father, I pray that you would help those of us who have made that decision to follow you, who have received your grace and mercy, that we would go and shine your light everywhere that we go that it is on all the time, that it shines brightly in a world that is dark, and that we don't hide it for any reason. So, Father, lead us in the step that we need to take this morning as we respond to the hearing of your word today. Thank you for your word. Pray that it is on fertile soil, and pray that we would be a people shining the light of the world to everywhere we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, maybe you want to take that next step in your faith. I'll be standing up here, and I'd love to talk to you about that. We're getting ready to also come to our time of communion, and we take this opportunity to kind of center ourselves as we reflect on who he is and what he's called us to do and how we get to be light through his sacrifice. So we all have a step to take this morning. So may we take that together. Let's be standing as we sing.